Suzuki. <laughs> right, Suzuki. If Suzuki is listening to this, sponsor me. Yeah, <laughs> Put it in the comment section. Love to hear. Been doing it for 30 years. Never had a problem. There's that no market. Is electronic. No mucking around. Catalytic converters, sensors, ABS, bullshit. If anyone working at Vic Roads well, was to see this video, they'd be saying, gee, that guy pays a lot of registrations. <laughs> All right, guys, I've got my dad's motorcycle collection in the background, and he claims he needs all these motorcycles. So we're going to ask him and find out why he needs so many motorcycles. Dad? Josh? G'day, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Let's, uh, let's take a look at your motorcycle collection, or what do you want to even call it? Is it a collection? I wouldn't call it a collection. They're my need. I need them. <laughs> I need every single one of them. All right, let's find out why you need them. Okay. All right, first up. This is the bike that you first got, and we are gonna go in chronological order of dates that he acquired the bike. So this was the very first one. And we, we do have a video uh, talking about this one in more detail, but just give us a quick rundown. Quick rundown? Bought this about uh, 25 years ago. I think it's um, closer to 30. Yeah, yeah, 25 years ago. I call it the Rambo bike. He did a segment on the Rambo bike. Um, I started using it for around the farm around here. When we first moved in, there was really nothing around, so I was using it to commute. But I'm glad to say, Josh, this is where you learn to ride a bike. All right, this is your first bike you rode. All right, teach you how to use the clutch, change gears. Um, thereafter, I restored it. I brought it back to life again. I had to, probably took me about two years. It was a slow project. Um, and I guess something else that I could have mentioned on it, would you believe I used to have your sister here on the tank, me, you, your brother, Fabian, and your mother. I know you find that hard to believe, but I don't know if you remember as a kid, we used to do that, yeah? I remember. All of us. Bloody crazy. <laughs> right, it was crazy. So the bike, I'm, I'm never going to get rid of it, right? Um, it has a lot of sentimental value. Okay, good bike. And like I said, Yamaha, XT, um, nothing electronic. Okay, and we'll talk about the electronic components. All completely manual um, operated switches, buttons, and nothing else, right? Valves and nothing else to worry about. All okay. right, Be before we wrap up on this one, because we've got quite a few bikes to get through, as you can see, uh, tell us something interesting about the bike. Interesting? Well, when I, I did mention it in one of your segments. When I went to rebuild it, I had finally finished it, and I... Um, I thought it was all, you know, all done, all complete. I was happy about it. I showed all my friends everything until one day I was going through a magazine. And in that magazine, I saw this, all right, a plate. And I said, oh my God, um, I can't believe it. The originals have come out with this plate. What is this plate? So I quickly ran to the bike and I had a look and there were two little pinholes. And I thought, oh shit. <laughs> so I searched every bike wrecker in Australia, couldn't find it. I searched every bike uh, wrecker in England, in America, couldn't find it. Finally found red, it was colour red, right, um, in South Africa. So I can't remember how much I paid. I think it was a, a total of $180. I got a ship from South Africa to here. And why, why it's so difficult to find, and I treasure it, like, like it's, it's almost like uh, my soul and my heart, because it's made out of ceramic. It actually sits on top of the, the exhaust. Yeah, it gets right? hot. So it's actually quite chalky. Right, so you just need to be careful, very, very careful. Any bump or knock, you can break it. So very hard to find, guys. Awesome. That's, that's the Yamaha. All right, let's uh, wrap up with that one and move on to the next bike that you purchased, which was what, oh, right. over, over 25 years later. Right, the Mighty DR. <laughs> right, you can see it here. The Mighty DR. Now, I bought this. DR, Once again. DR650, to clarify. Okay. Mighty DR, the DR650 Suzuki. Do you even know what year it is? Uh, 2205, I think it is. 204, 205. 2015, mate. Is this 2015? 2015. <laughs> but, but, but you wouldn't know because they uh, haven't changed anything since 1998, I believe. So. <laughs> All right. So once again, being old fashioned, okay, no electronics, basic, simple, piston, crank, crankshaft, uh, Overhead valves, adjustable valves, none of this bullshit shim, shim on bucket, shim under bucket. Just a lot of bullshit, right? So it's just manual and uh, again, no electronics. I got it because that was too small, okay, the 250. I went to 650. You know that we do a lot of hunting. We go a lot of camp, do a lot of camping and so forth. 
So I got it, it's a great all-rounder. I will never part with it. And until I die, Josh, it's yours, you can take it. All right? <laughs> um, great bike, very, very, very reliable, bit of a thumper, um, great power. Um, on top end, you'll be quite surprised when you wind it out. Yeah, guys, I've got a video actually talking about it, so check that one out. But yeah, phenomenal right. power actually. So good bike, like I said, all basic, basic, easy to work on, easy to service, easy to get the plugs, or what to a plug, it's only got the one plug. Um, yeah, just a basic all rounder. I, it's registered, road registered, I use it actually sometimes to commute to work, just now and then to keep the batteries charged. Um, use it local, and when we go away, camping. Right, great bike. I was going to ask if there was anything interesting, but even myself, I'm trying to think. I don't know if there has been an interesting story about this specific DR650. All, all I can say is, you know, a Toyota Hilux, unbreakable, unbreakable. Yeah, unbreakable. I really, honestly, I, I think the motorcycle community. Agrees. Unbreakable, guys. Get, get yourself a DR. I, I think they're discontinued making them now. They're not making them anymore. N they don't sell them in Australia, but yeah. they are still sold globally in yeah. the US. So, so from a reliability point of view, you could imagine when they were manufactured 30 years ago, till today, nothing has changed on them other than colours. Yeah. All right. I've got an aftermarket tank. That's not the original tank. I increased capacity. I think it went from a nine litre to 21 litres. So, but otherwise, great bike. Great bike. Awesome. Alrighty, that's the uh, DR650. Let's uh, let's move on to right. what is another Come across. <laughs> Suzuki. All right. Wait, would you say that the DR got you into the Suzuki family? Because you never owned Suzukis before then. Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> right, Suzuki. All right. right. What is if what Suzuki? Is if Suzuki is listening to this, sponsor me. Yes, <laughs> get him a bike, Suzuki. All, All right. right. So, I got a new job. Right, it's 60 k's from home. Um, I was using the DR for a while, but look, it's all freeway. 60 k's of just highway, nothing else. So I had to get a road bike. So I started looking at something basic. I was on my, my probationary, so I couldn't go anything higher than a 650. Got myself a Suzuki GS 500, right? GS, two 500, GS 500F, because they do sell an E. Yes, the E is without the, without the fairing. The F stands for fairing. Okay, so I got the fairing. Um, great bike. I bought it at 9,000 Ks. I've got 40,000 now, and I have never had a problem. And once again, no electronics. <laughs> All right, so no fuel injection, no catalytic converters, none of the bullshit that exists today. Very basic, very easy to work on, very, very simple to service, very, very reliable. Um, and you know what? For what I use it for, Top speed, I mean, it's, it's, I've pushed this, yeah? And I've probably reached 160, 170. But again, that was on a private property. That was at a farm, wasn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Under controlled conditions, Josh. Exactly. Not exactly. on the freeway. No, no, no. We wouldn't um, do that. But for commuting in between traffic, um, getting in between the cars, it's a great bike. It's, quite, quite, uh, it's quite light. Nimble. Not, not very uh, wide either, is it? Not wide at all. Um, great bike. And like I said, I've done a lot of, well, when I say a lot of work, just basically with an oil seal leaks, Easy to, easy to get to, easy to access, easy to change the plugs. Um, every, everything's accessible, all right? And, and I don't know if we touched on it, but this is a 2005, I believe. This is a 2005. Yeah. 2005. Great bike. I load it up at the back, put all my work, computer, everything at the back. I carry even wet weather gear. I've got everything, right? Throw it in there. And you know what? Part of your segment when you mentioned, you know, here's my dad's collections, and I said to say it's a collection, every bike I've got is a need, right? So this is my work workhorse. And there is actually an interesting backstory to this one. Like, I came with you to, to, to pick this one up. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so the story behind this is we picked it up at a farm. Um, I saw it there, made the guy the offer, I bought it, um, and I took it home, and I guess the first thing that I, I did was, you know, remove the seat, remove the tank, and lo and behold, what do I find sitting in between the cylinders? A wasp nest. Yeah, uh, I, 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 just a little bit of backstory, guys. This was in a in like a barn on a farm yeah. where I don't think the bike had been moved for you know five yeah, plus years. It was so it, yeah, it, it was pretty dirty. I wouldn't say it, it was neglected, but and it wasn't neglected. But it, it wasn't like show said, it wasn't showroom condition. It, it wasn't showroom condition. The, the chain had never been lubricated. It was dry as. Um, but that wasp nest, um, I had to you know dig it all out. It was all entrenched right in between the cylinders. When I say in between the cylinders, you got the you got the two spark plugs, yeah. You got like this concave in between. Right in between was a wasp nest. 
But you've you've done a good job of uh, bringing it back to life. So yeah, yeah, all good, all good. Like she, I said, she very reliable. Looks honestly, brand new. Yeah, she's a good, good, good bike. Like I said, a good all-rounder. I did change the exhaust on it. I did have the original um, factory exhaust. And the only reason why I changed it, I needed a bit more noise. When commuting in traffic, you want to be, be, be heard. Um, the other one, I must admit, was so quiet that you were actually sneaking up the cars and they just couldn't hear you. It sounded like a sewing machine. Yeah, now I rock up the cars and if I want them to move, just one rev and, and you've got this nice thump. They actually move out of the way. So, no, good bike. Good bike. Beautiful. Well, that's, right. the, that's the GS500. Now... Keeping in theme with the last So what have we got? Bikes. We've got a Suzuki Suzuki. We've got the Yamaha there, right? Yeah, but yeah. the Yamaha, there's a story behind uh, that. We're still in the Japanese, <laughs> Jap in, in Japanese. The Japanese manufacturing, so. Now we move over to this. The beast. Now, how did this one come to, to exist? First of all, I go against all my principles. Electronic fuel injection, catalytic converters. Um, this has got this has got valves, it shims under bucket, which is a nightmare. I was going to say therefore, Josh, <laughs> which is a nightmare. I haven't done the, the valve check yet. I've got uh, close to forty thousand k's. It's overdue for a valve check, so I need to do it. It's just the work that needs to get done. All right. So this one here, I call it my again weekend bike. Now. That was, the Juzuki GS was my work bike, so I used that from Monday to Friday. On a Saturday or Sunday, I'll use this, all right? Now, it's a 12, it's a Suzuki 1250FA. Hey, um, that's another thing, ABS, the only bike that ABS. you ABS. <laughs> I'm not gonna comment, I guess ABS is a safety feature, but you know what I think about ABS, Josh? Anyway, so the reason why I got this, I use it on the weekends and I commute with my wife. Right, so we like to go away camping or we like to go away for a ride to the city and so forth. So she sits on the back. We've got our, our package and luggage and everything packed on the side. It's a 1250, so I cannot stress the amount of power this thing has, um, even with two people on there. Um, overtaking power is just inc absolutely incredible. Um, as a matter of fact, Josh, I have never, since I've had this bike, <laughs> ever opened this up. You know, actually done this. Right, never. Because I don't know where I'm going to end up. Well, we, we, we've, we've got to change that, guys. And just leave in the comments below if you want to see Dad take this to Phillip Island because he's pretty <laughs> responsible. He's never really opened up the bikes, as he said. So I'm pretty sure we all want to see him open this up on Phillip Island. But let's get back to explaining it. I don't know if everyone wants to see me do that. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we do. I'm sure we do. Um, anyway, so look, it's a, it's a good bike. Uh, four cylinders. Um, yeah. I've actually been able to... Obviously, remove the seat, remove the tank. I've got access to the spark plugs. I've changed the spark plugs. Um, coil packs are easy to access. Like I said, just it's the valve work. Now, if you've got a problem, if you go back to the GS, because it is important that you check your valves every 20,000, every 30,000 Ks. Um, and on the GS, you've got the shim sitting on top of the bucket. Very easy, all right? So it's just a matter of pushing down the valve and out comes the shim, measure it up and, and replace. This one, unfortunately, has the shims under the bucket. Right, so if you've got, need to do a valve adjustment, it's a big, big job. The side of the engine has to come off the cover plates. You have to actually remove the cams, chain, timing chain, cams, everything to take out that, that bucket, measure up that shim and do the replacement. So it's a big job. And if you can't do it, you're not a handyman, then it's gonna be a costly process, I guess, yeah. um, to get done. Yeah. Um, so look, there's not much I can say. It's the only bike that I do own that ca carries electronic components. So, for those of you who say, yeah, you know, electronics are better than, uh, I guess, non-electronic bikes, I disagree with that. I don't trust this, okay? And I don't trust it because if I go away camping or something like that, just anything minute can go wrong that you cannot repair there and then. I don't carry onboard scanners, right? I don't, uh, you know, it's just very hard to diagnose. You've got sensors all over the place. You just don't know. But it is a Suzuki. Right? So it's a bike that can go into limp mode. But, it, goes, but, but it's a Suzuki, so you can be pretty confident that nothing's going to go wrong. Agree. Agree with you. However, the risk factor is slightly higher. Yeah. All right? Now The risk factor. Now, like we have with the other bikes, I have asked you, is there anything interesting? And I'm, I'm thinking you probably don't have one, but I actually recall one about the exhaust because it's not a... It's, it's, it, it's not a stock ah, exhaust. Okay, okay, good, good one. You actually yeah. reminded me. So what happened was when I bought it, I had to go and get it registered. And in Australia, Victoria, um, part of the registration is that you have to have the original factory fitted exhaust. 
um, otherwise they won't pass it. You won't be issued with a roadworthy certificate. So miraculously, Josh found me in the exhaust. I did. Right? For hundred dollars. Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> it was right around the corner. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Grab the right. exhaust. Grab the exhaust. I put the exhaust on. I went into Vic Roads. They registered it for me. Came home and took it off in two seconds. <laughs> Never to be seen again. <laughs> Once again, it's, it's a nice exhaust, um, yeah. nice sound to it. Um, and yeah, not much I can say. I service it. The one disadvantage over the GS is I don't have to remove the fairings to remove the oil filter, right? So the disadvantage on this one, modern electronics, right, is the fact that I have to remove the fairings to access the filter. And it's a pain in the rear. Yeah, right? that's the same. Pain with, in the rear. That's the same with my beast over there. Right, so I kind of wish Suzuki would have been a bit smart about it, right? But uh, they seem to always, uh, these days, they just seem to complicate things a little bit more and more, all right, as yeah. we get more modern. Alrighty, so we've got first bike. Well, not really your first ever bike. So hang, bike on, this, hang on, hang on. This video is all about me having a collection or me having a necessity for all these bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first bike. So that's your you training bike. It. Yeah. You had your want to get into dirt biking, trail riding. So you need camping something. and hunting. We do. Yeah. So we go out in the bush. Then you needed a co commuter work bike, yep. only used for work, and run up all the k's on that. Yeah. This is my weekend bike. Right, take my wife in the back, and off we go. All right. Well, people have, see, people have seen this one in the background because it's right there. But and now, here we go. We have, <laughs> we have a Harley, non-Japanese. What is Yankee this? Yankee Doodle <laughs> bike. Right? What is this? Abomination. Uh, your mother. This is your mother. Right. So, it's a, a 1200 Sportster Harley, 2005 model. Um. Uh, what can I tell you about it? Okay, so first of all, is it a necessity? According to my wife, it is. Right? <laughs> she likes to get into the leathers. So she, I've got a leather jacket, right? We got the, um, what do you call it? The skull um, helmets. Yeah. Right? I don't know. You know, open face helmets, right? Yeah. With the bandanas and so forth. So we use this one only to cruise for the day. That was the weekend bike, right? <laughs> the Japanese bike, weekend. We go away to places. But this one here, if we want to go for a day out, I don't know, to the beach or something like that, we use this, all right? Um, now, what are my thoughts on it? Is it comfortable? It is comfortable when you sit on it, but because it's got the old spring-style suspension at the back, I don't know if you can see it, Josh. You can see the springs at the back. I have to change yeah. the springs, by the way. It's a bit of a pain to get to. See these springs here? These old-style springs, I tell you what, you feel it on your bum, all right? You can actually feel every bump on the road. So it is a bit of a rough ride. Comfortable because you're sitting backwards, legs forward, and it's great. But otherwise, it's um, it's yeah, a bit of a hard ride, okay? I actually replaced the springs. They're, they're aftermarket springs. Um, I did it myself, so yeah, no dramas. The engine is obviously different to the Japanese bikes. They work on a dry sump principle. Um, so to service it, it's, it's look, it, you have to get used to servicing it. Um, it's, a, it's, it's got some, some, you know, some differences that uh, it's quirky, you just have to get used to. It's quirky, it's different. Yeah. Just to let you know, my bikes, no, I never go to a mechanic. <laughs> I do all the work myself, and if I don't know how to do it, I either YouTube it, and you guys out there help me. Otherwise, I, um, I, I work it out for myself, yeah? I've got all the tools, so I do everything that I need to do. I, am, I have not had any problems with it yet yet right <laughs> um but like i said Jap i still prefer the japanese bikes um just much more easier to work on far more reliable um on the harley here like i said i don't know the reliability i don't use it too often we, we've had a lot of rain in the last couple of weeks so i don't go out on the weekend maybe today for example my wife might want to go to the beach for a, a ride we'll take the harley plus keep the batteries charged all right all righty, what's something interesting? I, I can't think of anything too interesting. It's a relatively new bike in the stable. Well, I think you did a segment on this too. I did, I did. So right. there will be a video on that, but I'm trying to think of something unique. Specific. But let's go, let's go back to, is it a collectible item or is it a necessity? Well, so well I've explained, well, right, work bike, weekend bike, day bike. But we can say that we didn't mention this is a 2005 and again, it's in good condition. So maybe you can say that this is a collection that you... It wants to appreciate, maybe, you know, it would be a collector. In I don't another... look at it like that, Josh. I look at it as one day I'll be gone and they'll be yours. <laughs> <laughs> another bike for me. 
Another bike for you. Um, the one thing, if anyone working at Vic Roads right, was to see this video, they'd be saying, gee, that guy pays a lot of registrations. <laughs> right? So if you add it all up, there's a lot of registrations here other than the, the XT Yamaha that you saw before. Yeah. All righty. That wraps up the, uh, the Harley. That's the Harley. Last, but certainly not least, <laughs> this is a, an interesting one because it's been in the background and people are probably wondering, what the hell is this? There's now, now, this bike here is even better than an electric bike, all right? Because, as you can see, it has no engine at all. <laughs> <laughs> no engine at all. It looks eerily similar to a bike down there. All right, so the story behind this is like this. It's just the chassis and frame at the moment. It did have an engine, and I can show you the engine later on, right? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna cut through that shortly. Yep. So I went to a wreck, wreckers, okay? I saw the sister or brother of the GS500F that I showed you before that I used to go to work. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take it for spare parts, um, more so for the engine, because I do on the GS400, given work and, and all the other riding I do every single day, I probably do on average about 30,000 to 35, possibly 40,000 k's a, uh, a year. Um, and that's a lot, a lot of kilometers. So I figured, you know what? If the engine was to go on that, it starts blowing smoke. I'm hoping to get 150, probably even 200,000 k's on it. I'll have an engine ready to, to substitute and swap it, right? And so what I've done is pull the engine out of this and I've completely rebuilt it, waiting to go into the GS500, should I have a problem or anything like that. Um, to change over the engine, it'd probably take me half a day, right? Pull that one out and put another one in. So it's a contingency, okay? Contingency risk management uh, principle that I've adopted to continue using the bike that I need to commute to work every day. Um, the thing I want to do with this is really just hold it now just for spare parts. Okay, the fairings are all gone, so I don't need that. The rims are good. The rims, uh, rims uh, the frame, in case that was to crack the frame. Tank is still good. Um, things like speedos, the um, the taco, right? So levers. Right? I've got some stuff. Mirrors in case I was to break the mirror. Let's pick a few uh, spider webs. A bit, yeah, a few spider webs right, bit, living bit, on it. A bit of rust. It stopped at thirty thousand, according to the speedo. Right. Don't so, know how accurate that is, but, but I'll, I'll show you the motor on this. All right, let's cut cut to the motor. You want to see the motor? Let's go. Okay. All right. So this is the engine that I pulled off the, the chassis that you saw for the GS500. Okay, I've completely rebuilt it, right? Um, here we go, Look, I haven't even put the rocker cover on yet. So it's completely rebuilt, and when I say completely rebuilt, what have I done? So I've done the bearings. I've done, I'm just trying to work bottom, working up. I've done all the bearings, I've done all the seals. Um, moving Going up, I've done the piston rings. The pistons were in good condition, so I've kept the, the original pistons. The bores were in good condition, so I just gave them a quick hone. New timing guides, new chain, new tensioner. Over here, tensioner. Carburetors, I opened up the jets, so increased jetting because of the exhaust, of the exhaust system that I've opened up. So this is ready to go. I just need to seal it up, okay, and use it. This is what I was, uh, it's ready to go, and like I said, if something was to happen to the to the one that I've got at the moment on the GS500. It'll be a half a day job, put this one in and off we go. So um, it's all been timed up, ready to go. Now, given that you've got a, it's a Suzuki GS500, you may never need to put this engine in because you're never gonna kill that one. And true, but just as, there's something that I do that many people out there may, may um, dispute or have a different opinion, okay? Um, I add to every full tank on all my bikes, including the electronic, uh, the GSX1250FA that I use on the weekends, I add probably about four mil of oil, two-stroke oil, to every full tank. But they're four-stroke bikes. They are four-stroke bikes and they are lubricated. Yeah, they are lubricated. I agree with you. But I still add it. All right, I still add it. I've never had a problem, okay? Especially on an electronic bike, the... The electronic management system has never picked up that I'm running a little bit more rich, right? So it hasn't been an issue for me. Um, I, think, I think of every engine as a chainsaw. Now, I know a chainsaw is a two-stroke, okay? But I've got a, a chainsaw here. Um, I've had it, actually, I've had it for 30 years, but the actual chainsaw itself is 45 years old, okay? And still the original rings, and it still burns like you wouldn't believe, right? So the principle behind lubricating the fuel, 
Okay, not only have I got some fuel that's lubricating the engine, but I've also got fuel in the fuel, uh, sorry, oil in the fuel, lubricating, uh, uh, helping the, with the lubrication system. So look, it's just something that you can never change. I mean, even, even in cars, okay, I throw always a little bit of oil in, in the tank, right, just to keep it, the whole system lubricated and rust free. I reckon people are gonna be like, what the hell, but you know what? Put it, it in the comments section, love to hear. Been doing it for 30 years, never had a problem on the old bikes. Had the new one, still haven't got a problem, right? On the Harley, I do the same thing, all right? It's about four or five mil of, of two-stroke oil, synthetic. I can even show you the brand, have a look here. All right, have a look here. There you go. Right, full, uh, well, this is semi-synthetic, but uh, sometimes I get the, the, the <laughs> synthetic, right? Like to treat the bike and I, sometimes. And I put it in there, and I haven't got a problem. You don't get smoke, you don't get, you don't blowing out of the exhaust, no issues. So. I'll continue running it, and that's why my experiment on the GS500, which does, like I said, 40,000, 30 to 40,000 Ks a year, I'm planning on getting at least 200, if not plus, 1,000 kilometres in, um, you know, by the time that engine's ready to, to, to be exchanged. And I'm going to attribute that to mainly adding oil to the fuel. All right? Interesting. Very interesting, guys. Well, like I said, let him know in the comments below if that's just the most outrageous thing you've ever heard, but... It works for him, so yeah, well. It works for me and it's all good, right? Let, let's, let's wrap this video up. All right, so I think we started off by saying, Dad, is it a collection, right? And you're obsessed collecting bikes or are they necessities? As I've run through it, you started off training on this, so I keep it as a, as a memory, you and your brothers. And, okay, this one here, to go camping. We all agree, thumbs up everyone, right? This one here to commute and burn it to the ground, right? And run it as, for as long as I physically possibly can for work only, right? This one to go away with your mother, needed more power to carry someone on the back, right? And um, mainly, like I said, when we go away. This one here for the day trip, day trip only, right? So we go to the beach or we go uh, to, to the islands or, or so forth. Um, that's it. And this one here, obviously, um, non-electric, non-powered, right? <laughs> no, only joking. For spare parts, all right, to keep the other one going, the GS500. Fantastic. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, it's definitely been interesting to, to walk through and just find out why he's got some of the bikes that he has, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, gonna feature Dad more on the channel. We're gonna get you to actually ride a real bike. What I wanna do, Josh? That is a real bike. <laughs> There's no that market. Is Electronic, no mucking around. Catalytic converters, sensors, ABS, bullshit. All right, but you know what, Josh? I bring you to the challenge for your, your all your viewers. Yeah, I would like to do an old versus new with you. Okay, so a debate. Start playing a, a debate. Let's see. Um, let's convince the viewers what's more reliable. Okay, uh, a, a modern day, everyday, electronic, computer driven uh, uh, bike, or one of these old style, doesn't know resistors or, or diodes or anything like that, right? Which right. would be more reliable? Guys, I'm gonna get my WR250R and we're gonna go through, you know, each of the different uh, segments of, of, of bikes, you well, know, whether say it's- Say that again, WR250R. WR. Let me, let me hear, calorie, calorie converter? Let me hear. Uh, no, it doesn't have a cat. It doesn't? No, okay, no. electronic fuel injection? Yeah, it does. Bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, just like bullshit. that one there. Bullshit. Yeah, I, I told you that's bullshit too, right? But uh, like I said, these bikes will outlast that. I'll have problems with that. All right, why? Electronic shit. All right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap it up there, but we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>